Hello, everybody. My name is Alyssa Cooper, and this is Cooking in Quarantine. So here we are. Slut Cup has life-giving pomegranate juice along with a little ginger beer to spice it up. Mm -mm -mm. If you're wondering about the bandage on my arm, I've been invited by the New York Blood Center to try to be a part of a study about how uh, regular blood donors, evidently we become um, low in iron, maybe not anemic, but low in iron. So they've tested me to see if I'm a candidate to be a part of the study. If not, on the same day that they asked me to be a part of the study, they also called and asked me if I'd give platelets. So there's that. So anyway, this is Egg Week. The incredible edible egg. So anyway, um, on Egg Week, hello Denise. So on Egg Week, I was going around, I was looking for some essential, um, uh, some essential, um, what am I trying to say? Recipes is the word. I was looking for recipes. And I came across this one for Vidalia Souffle. And immediately my mind went flooding back to being 25 years old in New York. And it seems to me in the 90s that there was a dish that was almost Duraguer. Almost everywhere you went, there was a puff pastry round with caramelized onions, thyme, and goat cheese melted. And I loved that. I would go and get that and a glass of red wine. That would be lunch for me with a little salad on the side. I loved, I loved, I loved. So when I ran across this recipe for called Vidalia Souffle, I immediately thought about that. And so even though the recipe, you know, I can't follow recipes. I have to do it my own way every time. Um, even though the recipe calls for Parmesan cheese, I have frozen a little block of goat cheese. Frozen, you may say. Yes, frozen indeed, because Soft cheeses have to be made hard in order for you to grind them up. And so just as I read ahead in this uh, recipe, I'm pretty sure that it wants the cheese to be incorporated with the wet stuff. So, guys, hello. I hope everybody is well today. So, as I mentioned, I went up to Columbia Prez, 168th and Broadway this morning, to uh, give my blood for testing to see if I'll be part of this uh, thing or not. And um, it's about, this is something that I found really interesting, that of the people who give, of the, uh, let me start all over again, of the amount of blood we need in the given year, people like me who give regularly have to give three times a year, every year, without fail, in order to just meet the blood need. So all I'm going to say is, if you are not immune compromised, health compromised, ill on, on some kind of medication that would, there's very little. If you haven't like traveled to the Congo, like someplace where there's Ebola, or regrettably there's still that horrible, ridiculous, that gay men can't, can't, um, uh, give, but so for those of you who have a gay man in your life who you love, your friend, your gay husband, maybe you go and you give blood for that person and yourself because if you give every time you can, you can give six times a year. If you think that you can't deal with the needle, nobody likes to watch needles going into their flesh. So what I do is this. I simply look away. Now the woman who did me today was awesome. Like I hardly even felt it. She was absolutely skilled. But of course, I was at Columbia Presbyterian. You would expect their people to be pretty good. So anyway, uh, I blather on. What are we gonna do today? So I have my cheese that I've gotta cut out of its packaging. Hello, Sarah. How are you, darling? And let's see. So I'm gonna cut this cheese out of its package. This is nice. It's a very, very, very light package. The paper on the back. It's very thin, so I feel like I'm not throwing much away. I like that. So let's just get myself the end out of here. 
The recipe calls for Parmesan, as I said, and it calls for three quarters of a cup. So I'm just going to do this right here, right down the big side, just to break this up into pieces that can be incorporated into the wet over here. The wet that I have here is um, I've got actually about three quarters of a cup of uh, whipping cream, because that's what I had. And then I thinned it out with the last quarter a little milk, just because I felt like that, that was a lot. And I lost a chunk of cheese. And it's right by my sneaker, so it's lost forever. <laughs> so let's see. Does that look like, that looks like more like a half a cup. While my hand is still a mess. Let's grate it up some more. Try not to get too much plastic in the recipe. It really, I understand from what I see in whales and other critters in the uh, ocean, plastic is no good in your gut. So here we go. Da 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 da. Okay, so here I am. Let me go fix my hand problem now. My cheesy, cheesy hand problem. So, my friend Daniel from DePaul was saying the other day that he was having trouble grating some kind of cheese that was soft, and I said, aha, you have to freeze it. So, that, I guess, made me also inspired, so thank you, Daniel. Um, here, let me get this cheese up before I smash it all over the floor. Clean my hands again. Da -da -da -da. A little more wiping. So, how is everybody today? So, I have, uh, I just noticed this morning, seconds ago before I went on, that on my YouTube channel, this is episode 90. And since it's still five days until my 60th, or until my six month anniversary of being basically domiciled in place, um, that means that in spite of going to Montauk, being away a few weekends, taken off to go poolside with handsome boyfriend, having the refrigerator broken, pipes changed, holes in the in the in the in the catch. I've still been here an average of every other day. That's not too bad. And a lot of people, you know, even pros who do this with somebody who, you know, I I, I think about how nice it must be at the Ina Garden where she probably has somebody there to like come over and smooth her hair and put her makeup on just right and iron her clothes for her. And she slips into them and she steps into her kitchen where the lights are all perfectly on and it's the perfect temperature for her. And everything is already mise en place. It's all ready to go. And all she has to do is just start doing her thing. I, I, I long for the day when I can move to a larger apartment because New York becomes so much more affordable. And then I can let some my 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 page live here and set up the kitchen for me every day. So anyway, let's go. So it's time to make my souffle. Now, you'll have to come back to Instagram a little later and see the finished product um, because I don't think we're going to sit around and wait for this baby to bake. So anyway, what I did was I went ahead, as you see, and I took about a half a stick of butter and two big old uh, good-sized Vidalia onions. I sliced them on the three millimeter slice on my um, mandolin. And it took me every minute of 35 to get them here to this color. Um, I put three or four sprigs of fresh tarragon. Oh, I love the licorice family. So I put that in there, and that's still here in here, leaching its deliciousness right into us. That doesn't need to be in the foreground, now does it? Mm. So I'm going to heat these back up just a little bit to loosen them up. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to take another tablespoon of butter. Here comes another hand washing. I should have thought about this ahead of time. Oops. And get this good and buttered up. Mm -mm. There we go. It does not call for flouring, so there's that. Just a butter. There we go. Greasy hand, here we come. It's a wonder, all of us that weren't accustomed to cooking for families and stuff, that our hands have survived. I've got to go creeping way back up in here for the soap. One second, here we go. 
So there we go. And I do have to say, as much as I enjoy doing this, that it's been nice doing it um, this summer, um, this summer schedule of three times a week, because I can on Thursdays about one o'clock. I have my kitchen all cleaned up, and I can break everything down and move the stand that holds this by my sink <laughs> apart. So I just wanted to warm it up just enough to get the um, the butter not coagulated. I don't want it to be too awful hot here. And here's what the instructions say to do. So I have buttered my thing. My oven is at 350. And I'm going to put my three eggs in my cup of milk cream. Milk and cream, right? Here, I should step back a little bit. I'm having trouble with very thin shelled eggs lately. That's something else I'll have to look into, like my interest in salt yesterday. Here we go. Another egg. Here we go, and done. And I'm supposed to bang, 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 put these together. One second, it wants me to incorporate the cheese with the eggs as well, but I also need to do my dry. So my dry is here, I have a tablespoon and a half of AP flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, right? AP flour, baking powder, there it is and a teaspoon of salt, or a half teaspoon of salt. So this wants me to whisk these things together, and I am gonna whisk them together, but not in a bowl, I'm gonna do it right here on the plate, right? I think I can pretty well incorporate these things right here on this plate, and then I'm going to need to incorporate this into those nice buttery browned onions, right? So, here we go, and I'm going to, ooh, let's first get my piece of tarragon out of here, my pieces de tarragon. I love tarragon. My, if, those, if you remember back when I made my chicken salad, my chicken salad, what makes it mine is the tarragon. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle this all kind of evenly over my onions. And move that around. All right, there we go. That is perfect. And since my heat isn't on, it's not gumming up too badly. There we go. And now, excellent. Right. I'm going to take this and transfer this to my baking dish. Now, see that? Now you can. Here we go. So, there's all those beautiful soft, gorgeous onions. Now you can do exactly the same thing with the tarragon, leaving out the dry ingredients and put them onto puff pastry, right? You can buy puff pastry in the grocery store, make a nice big, I'd say like a six inch round and put this around, brush a little egg wash around the edges, crumble up some cheese on there Mamma mia, and literally with a salad with a nice sharp vinaigrette. It's one of the best, simplest dishes in the world. And a, a great glass of red wine. Oh, perfect. And I realize that I'm starting to get a little romantic about the fact that fall is coming. And that means that I can do a lot of things that I don't do off season. And so um, I don't have on my list my poor man's cassoulet which I love, and so we'll put that on. The first cold day will be on the list. Mm. So now, here's all my cheese. There's probably, oh no, that came very clean out of there, just a little on the edge. 
So I think actually I'm going to do this the opposite way and put the egg and the cheese rather than the cheese and the egg. That will be a lot less sloppy. And here we go. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Does anybody feel like the very often the bowls that you have, which have spouts on them, are left-handed? I always feel that way. Oh, I can already hear that my uh, baking powder is starting starting to puff up in here. So I'm just going to spread my onions out really evenly in the bottom of my pan so I don't have any thick onion spots or any... There we go. Lot of any. Oh, maybe I should get all the rest of my... Um, onion yumminess out of this pan also. There's a lot of stuff there. Don't leave anything behind, I say. Not anything at all. There's a lot of flavor in the bottom of a pan. Look, look at all that that's going to come out. Mmm. Fat and binder, baby. Here we go. So now I'm just going to pour my egg on with all of this cheese. And I am going to try to take it right down the middle and slowly so I don't feel like I'm over cheesing any spot. Oh, Lordy B. I think this is going to be just spectacular. So, um, the recipe that I based this on wants you to put them into small individual ramekins or a 9 by 13 well, I never make a full of anybody's recipe because they're basically giving you, you know, four, six, eight uh, portions, and I don't need four, six, or eight portions, even if I'm having company because, for goodness sakes, I can only get so many people in here. So here's this, and I'm just going to lift this a little bit to make sure that my onions aren't densely packed in any way, and that the onion gets mixed here in with the eggs, and I'm just feeling all da-da-da, oogie and romantic about my beautiful onions and goat cheese. So here you go, guys. This is going to be my updated nod to my romance of the 90s. No more puff pastry onion tarts. Now here, we're going to have this great souffle. Also notice, guys, that the dish I put this in is a full fingertip away from the top. So it's got plenty of room to grow between the eggs and the baking powder. Expect it, and anything that says souffle, expect it to puff up and grow. So fingers crossed, tiptoe. Hope nobody starts jackhammering anytime soon. And let's get this baby in here. Bing, bing. And here we go. Get our timer set. There we go. So, guys, I don't know what you've got going, but I found something good to do for my fellow man today. Participate in a study that will hopefully help make the blood supply more efficient and healthy. And um, I didn't get much exercise because it's really wet and gray up until just like maybe in 15 minutes it's going to be sunny. It looks like it could be sunny on the riverside. So that's my story, guys. That's what's going on here today. I've got still a box of butter lettuce in there. And I really have kind of I'm really low on vinaigrette. I used the last of last week's, last week's cranberry vinaigrette last night for supper. Um, so anyway, that's my story. I hope you guys can find something to do good for your family, good for your community, good for your world. I hope you can find something and the time to do something good for yourself. Get some exercise, meditate, just be calm, just fill up with oxygen, just we all, even those of us who are former singers who fill up our bellies every time we breathe, forget to the incredible 
relaxation that comes with slowly filling up and filling up to the bottom and not worrying about anything except filling up and getting your body so full of oxygen that you almost want to yawn. <laughs> so guys, do something good. Be peaceful. Be calm. Bring good into the world. You know, I saw a t-shirt last night that is now in my in inbox, my, my basket, that says kindness is free. And that's a choice you can make every day that you wake up to be kind. And that absolutely has nothing to do with the kind of day you're having being kind. I love you all. Take care of yourself. Fix something good to eat. Find something to do for somebody else. Check into Instagram later. We'll see what this baby looks like when she's all done. And I really got to learn to start my timers. I love you all. See you tomorrow as Egg Week continues. Ciao.